Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We're continuing our series on heroic figures in Islamic history, and now we are looking at Omar. Um, and Dr. Shabir, Omar, may God be pleased with him, was um, an important supporter from the very beginning. And one component of his personality is that he was very strong. Right? He was well known as being a very strong, fierce individual, kind of brash. And his becoming a Muslim and being a Muslim um, kind of strengthened the Muslim community as a whole. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yes, yes. He is known to us as uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab or Omar the son of Khattab, named after his father. And um, he uh, at first was opposed to the message of, of Islam. Strongly opposed. Uh, yes, he wanted to strong, kill the Prophet Muhammad. Exactly, exactly. So uh, it is mentioned that uh, one day, sword in hand, he was ready to go and uh, finish off this matter once and for all. Uh, but uh, someone seeing him in that uh, circumstance and discerning that he was up to no good uh, got into conversation with him and uh, alerted him that his sister had already embraced Islam mm -hmm. just to sort of divert his attention to give time for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be warned uh, and for him to take measures for his own safety. So Omar, now being uh, enraged by the idea that his sister had embraced uh, the, the, this newfound faith that he's trying to quell, uh, went straight ahead to his sister's home where his sister and her husband were being instructed uh, about the Quran uh, by another seasoned uh, Muslim. Uh, and uh, Omar could hear them uh, reading a surah of the Quran, which is now the 20th chapter of the Quran called Surah Taha. Okay. Um, so he, he, the, the, the teacher went into hiding when they heard uh, of Omar's presence. And uh, he got his way in, started striking his sister and her husband. And uh, her sister's face, uh, his sister's face bled on that occasion. And uh, seeing that uh, cooled him down a little bit. Um, and then he said, okay, um, you know, uh, show me what you, what you were reading. And they said, according to the story, um, that, uh, you know, only the pure can touch this. So you have to purify yourself first. Uh, nonetheless, when he read it, he uh, felt that this is, uh, you know, not an ordinary piece of writing. And he became convinced that this is a revelation from the Almighty God. So basically, he has become a Muslim right then and there. Uh, so now he set out to go and meet. I'm getting emotional. Yeah, listening to this story. it is an emotional story. <laughs> uh, then he uh, set out to go and meet the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, not as a killer, but uh, as, as, as a submitter uh, to the faith. Uh, but the Muslims did not know this yet. So uh, they were all apprehensive about him. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, okay, let's him in. And uh, the Prophet went forward to him. And uh, the Prophet himself was, was a brave person. Uh, so despite Omar's uh, fame and, uh, and notoriety for, you know, his uh, brashness, as you mentioned, and his stout uh, uh, comp uh, uh, posture and, and his uh, fierceness, perhaps, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, reportedly went forward uh, and, and grabbed him by his clothing and pulled him to the center of the room uh, as if there's going to be a showdown here. <laughs> uh, but then it, it became quickly evident that uh, he had actually come in peace. He had embraced the, the religion. And that gave Muslims uh, a lot of courage to uh, be able to now pray in public. And, and Omar Adilahwan himself uh, would go and pray in public and he would dare people uh, to to oppose him and what he was doing with his newfound faith, uh, so that was. A I good believe he was the first person to pray at the Kaaba, right? A, a very open public place. <laughs> I, I I defer to your knowledge about that. Uh, so yes, he he did add a lot of strength to the to the Muslims, and and courage, and uh, he would then go on to be with the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him on many occasions and many circumstances, uh, defending the Muslims and uh, boldly proclaiming the, the message of Islam to others. Uh, the, uh, Omar is known to have uh, had a lot of great insights. Uh, this is one of the reasons why he is referred to in Islamic history as Omar al-Farooq. Al-Farooq means someone like who differentiates between the good and evil or, or almost like the, the criterion himself. Like if you want to know the difference between good and evil, see the you know where Omar is. You mm -hmm. would know that you know whatever he approves, that's good. Whatever he 
uh, declines, uh, that, that must be bad. Uh, it, but his insights go beyond that. Uh, it is uh, mentioned on some occasions that he would make a suggestion to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, uh, and God would send a revelation to the Prophet uh, in a way confirming the suggestion that was made by Omar radiallahu oh, So in the biographies of Omar, yes, uh, some verses of the Quran are, are mentioned as uh, being revealed um, after Omar had made, made a suggestion. Uh, so this kind of prophetic insight that uh, Omar is said to have uh, had, it came to be reflected in a, in a narrative that says that if there was to be a prophet after the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it would be Omar. It is also related that uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, said that when uh, Omar is walking on one side of the street, uh, the, the Satans walk <laughs> on, <laughs> on the, the other, other side. side. <laughs> yeah. So... Now, Omar uh, was a very important uh, leader, and when he became the uh, caliph, as was nominated by Abu Bakr before him, uh, he uh, led the Muslim community into um, a, a great uh, expansionary efforts uh, for his time, uh, facing the Sassanid uh, Empire on, uh, in the east uh, and uh, the Byzantine Empire uh, in, in the west. Uh, Abu Bakr had consolidated the uh, Muslim community and uh, saved it from fra in internal fracture. And uh, Omar then, building on what Abu Bakr had left, expanded that uh, solidified uh, Muslim community in the, in the two directions. Dr. Shabir, Omar was very decisive and he could get things done very easily, you know, and, and, and done in a, in a very good way. One of the things that I noticed that he did is um, in terms of the administration of the state, he made sure that it was very organized, right? Um, there were districts and, and governors, and, and he made sure that they were not corrupt in the, in the way that they governed as well, right? So he was very strict about um, making sure that they don't commit misdeeds or they don't take money from the treasury, you know, all those sorts of things. That's right. That's right. So he would call them to account. If uh, reports came to him that a governor was mistreating people, he would call the govern governor in for questioning. Uh, he himself was a very humble man, and it is, uh, uh, despite his, you know, uh, his, his ferocity prior to his becoming a Muslim. And uh, even after becoming a Muslim, uh, yes, I think he maintained that. I mean, his bravery and so on. Despite all of that, he was also very humble. Like, he knew to differentiate between the circumstances that would require his bravery uh, and might and the circumstances that would, uh, you know, demand his uh, softness and, and uh, gentle nature. Uh, so it is reported that he used to, uh, as caliph, uh, uh, he, he would uh, go around the, the streets of Ma Medina to make sure uh, that everyone was safe and protected and they had something to eat. It is re reported that he said that if a, if a dog dies hungry, uh, Omar will be held responsible for that. So uh, on one occasion, he um, came to know that uh, there was a woman in, in, the, in the outskirts uh, who had children, and, and she was just keeping them, um, uh, having good hopes by having a pot on, on fire, uh, but there was no food for them. Mm -hmm. and, and Omar came to know of that, and he went to the uh, public treasury and brought some provisions and, and, brought, and gave it to, to the woman. And he wanted to be the one to cook for the children. So he did that, and they ate, and... Uh, uh, finally, the woman being on the outskirts didn't recognize Omar for who he was. So she said, I, I wish you were the caliph rather than Omar. And he said to her, when you come to see the caliph, you'll find me there. So these are, are stories that obviously were generated long after the events or, you know, remembered long after the events. Uh, but they nonetheless capture the, the memory that Muslims have of Omar. Uh, his uh, might on the one hand and his gentleness on, on the other. His care for this community and his, the example that he has set for others to follow. And uh, not an easy example. Uh, but an ideal for us to look up to. We'll leave it at that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. 
Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqa jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.